While countries grapple with the spread of the coronavirus, a different kind of virus is causing panic in China after a man died of the Hanta virus. The CCP virus has cost an unknown number of lives in Wuhan alone, possibly numbering in the thousands or tens of thousands. And now one resident wants to hold the local officials accountable for the devastation. Earlier this month, several lawyers in the U.S. brought the Chinese regime to court for covering up the outbreak, allowing it to become a pandemic. Now a Chinese lawyer is trying to shift the blame to the U.S. The president of Harvard University and his wife just tested positive for the CCP virus. The couple are self-isolating at home. And the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics will be postponed for a year. Japan's prime minister making the announcement today. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. Just as the world gets prepared for the novel coronavirus or CCP virus, there is another virus causing panic. According to reports, a migrant worker in China suddenly felt unwell in the early hours of March 23rd and was rushed to the hospital. He died several hours later. According to health authorities, the man tested negative for the CCP virus, but did test positive for another virus, the Hanta virus. So what is the Hanta virus and how worried should people be? According to the CDC, Hanta viruses are a type of virus commonly spread by rodents and can cause several different types of diseases. It can spread to people through inhaling air from rodent urine or droppings that's infected with the Hanta virus. According to the CDC, treatment options are limited, so it's best to avoid rodents. So what are the symptoms? According to the Mayo Clinic, there are two stages. The first stage includes flu-like symptoms. Then the condition usually worsens after 10 days to potentially life-threatening breathing problems. In North America, the mortality rate is over 30 percent. According to Chinese state-run media, the medical teams that came from other places to Hubei province to help are going home now. But according to Chinese Caixing.net, an internal document from March 20th shows the Hubei novel coronavirus epidemic prevention and control headquarter asked medical teams from outside Hubei province to stay, and the date of departure would be announced later. A source said right now, every day there are up to a dozen asymptomatic patients who test positive. The situation in Wuhan is unclear. As the pandemic continues to spread around the world, Chinese authorities announced they will lift travel bans to and from Hubei province. This, as authorities have been reporting close to zero new cases for several days. But locals are worried. A citizen in Wuhan told us many people have tested positive again. In Wuhan, many people who have been treated or quarantined in temporary hospitals have relapsed and tested positive again. Now the hospitals do not dare to accept patients. There are policies to this. A big data analysis conducted by the University of Southampton research team in mid-February of 60,000 people who left Wuhan is lining up with how the CCP virus is actually spreading. In mid-February, the research team, known as World Pop, had tracked the mobile phone movement of around 60,000 people who left Wuhan before it was put on lockdown. The map tracked them to cities mostly in Asia, but also Europe, U.S., Australia, and other countries. It predicted the virus would spread further and warned countries to be prepared, and high-risk cities in China and around the world should strengthen screening to prevent the spread. And a new report in France Radio International reveals how Chinese media create video programs showing international support for China. According to the March 22nd report, a media in China published an ad online in Chinese and English to hire one international student to make a video about racial discrimination against Chinese because of the novel coronavirus. The ad didn't specify what country just indicated the shooting time would be two hours and the price 60 euros. In the Chinese version, the ad specifically states the need to face the camera and raise a sign, but did not mention what would be written on the sign. Yesterday, we reported about a photo circulating online of a banner which read congratulations to the U.S. epidemic and wished the Japanese epidemic a smooth, long sailing. It was posted on a restaurant in China. This photo is now going viral in Japan and aroused anger among the Japanese. Yesterday, the owner of the restaurant was fired from the company. 
A netizen wrote, authoritarians indoctrinate people with hatred of foreign countries in order to redirect the anger of the people toward foreign countries. People do not understand the intentions of authorities and think they are patriotic by criticizing foreign countries. They don't know that the rulers don't need you to be patriotic, they only need you to obey and keep silent when being oppressed. The CCP virus spreading from Wuhan has cost an unknown number of lives in that city alone, possibly numbering in the thousands or tens of thousands. And now one resident wants to hold local officials accountable for the devastation it's caused. A taxi driver in Wuhan lost his mom to the CCP virus. Now he wants the government to compensate. He talked to her sister media, the Chinese Epoch Times. We're using a pseudonym for Jiang, and his voice has been distorted to protect his identity. I recorded the whole process of taking her to the hospitals. I have the videos and I have the receipts. Now I can't go out yet. When I can go out, I will find a lawyer, even sue the regime for compensation. This is not a natural disaster. It's a man-made disaster. He took his mom to three hospitals. At the last hospital, they waited an entire day for a bed. Soon after his mom was admitted, her condition turned critical and she passed away. He blames Wuhan officials for covering up the outbreak in its early stages. First, concealing that it happened, and second, saying it wouldn't spread between humans. They suppressed the eight whistleblowers. The Public Security Bureau said they were spreading rumors. Of course, we trusted the Public Security Bureau. Then an expert came out and said, it can't transmit human to human, nothing to worry about. That's how it got so bad in Wuhan. This is completely due to irresponsible acts of government officials. He pointed to one person particularly deserving of blame, Wuhan Central Hospital's Communist Party secretary, Tsai Li. The party secretary in the central hospital, she didn't allow the doctors to talk about it. They couldn't even wear face masks. That's why the central hospital suffered the most losses. Zhang said these officials, and especially this party secretary, should answer for this disaster. For regular folks, if you drive under the influence and endanger the public, you'll be sentenced at least six months, even without hurting anybody. Her action resulted in so many deaths. He added, since his mom got sick, he had to deal with various officials of the Chinese Communist Party. He said in his experience, these officials would rather deflect blame than take full responsibility for what they do. A lawyer from Wuhan, China, is suing the U.S. government for bringing the CCP virus to Wuhan. The lawyer is asking the U.S. to pay for the economic loss he suffered and for President Trump to publicly apologize to him. A Chinese lawyer named Liao Xuguang is trying to bring President Trump and other U.S. officials to court for spreading the virus. The CCP virus first appeared in Wuhan, China last December and has since infected 400,000 people around the globe. But the Chinese lawyer thinks the U.S. is responsible. According to China state media, the complaint claims that the U.S. government let the virus spread to the entire world and Wuhan is one of the worst hit areas. The lawsuit was filed last Friday at Wuhan Intermediate People's Court. His complaint was published on China state media and went viral on social media Weibo. One Chinese outlet calling the lawsuit the first gunshot against America. The lawyer claims that he is just an ordinary person suing in the name of the Wuhan people. But according to a Chinese online encyclopedia, he is actually a local official responsible for legal affairs. In an interview with Radio Free Asia, the lawyer said he was acting in accordance with China's Department of Foreign Ministry. Earlier this month, a Chinese spokesperson suggested on Twitter that the U.S. military brought the virus to Wuhan. So far, no incredible scientist has provided any evidence to support this. The Chinese CDC originally said the virus originated from a Wuhan seafood market. The lawsuit came after several U.S. lawyers sued the Chinese regime for covering up the outbreak and allowing the virus to spread globally. But we feel that the Chinese government knew about the disease, they knew about the virus, they did nothing to contain it, and they tried to protect their own economic self-interest and didn't disclose what they knew until it was too late and it became a widespread pandemic soon thereafter. We're talking trillions and trillions of dollars in damage that has been caused 
because China did not want to tell the world about what they knew. That is unacceptable. The Chinese Communist Party has silenced whistleblowers and cracked down on journalists who tried to inform the world about the situation in China. Penny Zhou, NTD News. Since the outbreak of the CCP virus, life inside the epicenter has not been easy. Videos circulating online say residents are committing suicide out of desperation. Just a warning, some of the following content may be disturbing to viewers. NTD Xu Wenrong has more. Even if the virus doesn't kill you, you might still die from lack of food. This is a huge problem for sure. As the lockdown continues in Wuhan city, videos circulating online show the desperation of residents running out of food, money or even being denied treatment. A Wuhan resident told us on March 20th that the difficulties in the epicenter are causing people in China to commit suicide. People are tired, hopeless. I don't know how many have jumped from buildings. Around 10 days ago, basically every other day or two, there were people jumping off buildings or committing suicide, using all kinds of methods. On February 25th, a netizen from China revealed that a patient with CCP virus returned home from hospital in Wuhan and found that the family had all died. He then hanged himself on the roof. A video on Twitter posted on February 16th shows a woman trying to jump off from the place that looks like a bridge. The woman in the video said, even if you help me, I won't survive. And the man saying, don't worry, if you're sick, look for a doctor. Videos like these have been coming out of China for months. I have seen many people who jumped. Why? People can't survive, that's why they jump. Some are even refused medical treatment. Another video posted on February 21st shows someone hanging from a building. The person who took the video said in Wuhan dialect, another death. This tweet is part of a threat showing people attempting to commit suicide in what netizens say is Wuhan city. One tweet reads, another suicide after infection. Wuhan netizens said that now if one person in the family is infected, it means that the whole family may be infected. No one cares. They can only wait for death in isolation and suffering. The spirit collapses first. Since Wuhan closed its city, how many people have committed suicide? So far, no one knows. Reporting by Xu Wenrong, NTD News. 17 U.S. states are ordering residents to stay at home. The order goes into effect today for seven of the 17 states. And in 10 other states, there are stay-at-home orders enforced in only some parts of the state. That means that over half of the nation's states are now shutting down all non-essential businesses. Massachusetts is among the most recent to order all residents to stay at home. And reviewing the orders issued by other states... I am issuing the following emergency order. Like many other states, he is requiring all non-essential workers to stay at home except to do things like taking a walk or buying medicine and food. Well, I feel a lot of stress, but I wouldn't say pressure. I'm doing what I can, which isn't very much, but I'm doing it. The order comes as no surprise, since Massachusetts is New York's neighbor. New York has the highest number of confirmed cases in the nation. Other states with bans starting today include Indiana, Michigan, New Mexico, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Delaware. To every single American, please know that the sacrifice you're making at this time is saving lives, many, many lives. The states with the highest number of confirmed cases of the CCP virus include New York at nearly 30,000 cases with over 200 deaths. Then New Jersey, reaching over 3,000 confirmed cases and 44 deaths. Following right behind New Jersey is Washington and California, both with less than 2,500 cases, but Washington's death total is just over 100, while California has less than 50 deaths. President of Harvard University Lawrence Backow and his wife have tested positive for COVID-19. In a letter, Harvard University President Lawrence Backow wrote that he and his wife started experiencing symptoms on Sunday. They received their test results on Tuesday. The couple has no idea how they contracted the virus. They're currently self-isolating at home. Backow is Harvard's 29th president. He and his wife met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping in Beijing last March. The new virus broke out in China late last year and is still infecting people in the country. 
Like other U.S. universities, Harvard asked students to move out and return home earlier this month. They now take classes online. As of Tuesday afternoon, the state of Massachusetts has reported over 1,100 confirmed cases. So far, 11 have died. As the U.S. faces social and financial hardship brought on by the CCP virus, President Trump says he'd like to have the country opened up again by Easter. President Trump said on Tuesday he'd love to have the country opened up by Easter. His remarks came during a CCP virus town hall on Fox News. This year, Easter falls on April 12th, making the president's goal at 19 days away. When asked if it's possible to get people back to work by then, Trump said yes, citing that the country has never been closed before. He asserted that the country must and wants to go back to work, adding that if the shutdown continues, a recession or depression could cause thousands more deaths, including suicides. Reiterating what he wrote on Twitter a few hours earlier, he noted that the longer it takes, the harder it will be to start up our economy. States around the country, including New York, California, and Illinois, have forced the closure of some businesses deemed non-essential. According to Trump, a shift back to work would be contingent on people practicing social distancing measures, like keeping six feet away from others, frequent hand washing, and no handshaking. He reiterated that the cure cannot be worse than the problem. Surrounded by members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, the president added, America will again and soon be open for business. The president's comments come after he talked to reporters on Monday. He said there's a large team working on the next steps after medical experts give the green light to let some regions get back to work. And in a surprising turn, the stock market today soared above its virus-affected state. The Dow marked the rebound with its biggest one-day percentage gain since 1933. With one hour of trading left for the day, the Dow Jones rose a huge 11 percent, or 2,112 points. This as the S&P 500 gained more than 9.3 percent and the Nasdaq over 8.1 percent. The boost was likely prompted in part by optimism that Congress will soon reach a deal on an almost $2 trillion virus stimulus package. Likewise, comments from President Trump this afternoon also helped garner confidence. He says he hopes to reopen businesses and restart the economy sooner rather than later. And while Senate works to soften the blow for the American people, elected officials on both sides of the aisle want to hold the Chinese regime accountable. There are at least three initiatives being worked on across the House and Senate. It seems the Chinese Communist Party may soon have the full weight of Congress to deal with. Three separate initiatives across the House and Senate are being spun up. The first is a bipartisan House resolution condemning Beijing's handling of the virus outbreak. It's co-led by Republican Jim Banks and Democrat Seth Moulton. The resolution details the regime's cover-up. It cites a study which found if China took action three weeks earlier, the spread of coronavirus would have been reduced by 95 percent globally. China should pay a severe price for that negligence for their role in the matter of allowing this to happen. The resolution has so far seen endorsement from over 30 co-sponsors. The second action is Senator Josh Hawley's resolution for a full investigation of the CCP's lies and actions that killed thousands of their own people and turned the CCP virus into a global pandemic. The senator says Beijing should pay damages to the rest of the world for their criminal conduct. He said the resolution would be introduced sometime on Tuesday. The third action is a request by three senators that President Trump create a task force to combat Chinese communist propaganda surrounding the virus. The task force would be under the National Security Council. The Chinese regime has doubled down on its anti-American propaganda. It initially suggested the American military brought the virus to Wuhan. It's now blaming President Trump directly. There is no evidence of the virus originating anywhere but Wuhan, China. The task force would, one, produce a white paper on the origins of COVID-19 and how the CCP worked to conceal it, and two, provide guidance to U.S. government employees on messaging surrounding COVID-19 and how to counter false CCP narratives about its origins. And in New York, a safety patrol group is trying to keep the city clean, literally. They're passing out wipes and food to the homeless, which they say have been forgotten in this pandemic. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more on the Guardian Angels. They patrol the streets for crime. Ah, you're shooting dice, huh? 
But now during this pandemic, they've added hygienic care for the homeless at the top of their list. The Guardian Angels are passing out hand wipes, food and water to the homeless who they say the city and other officials aren't doing enough to help during this time. That's an alcohol water solution, so it's going to wash your hands real good. There are about 58,000 homeless people living in shelters in New York City. The city found last year that over 3,000 were without shelter on one night. And while people are told to self-isolate at home and wash their hands, Sliwa said the homeless sometimes do not have those options. They keep telling us that on TV over and over, wash your hands. Well, how are the homeless and emotionally disturbed going to wash your hands? Some of them have no control of their physical or emotional faculties. You have to wash it for them. So the patrol group gives care packages to those who need them the most on the trains and in the subways. Sliwa said you can't ignore the homeless because they can also get COVID-19 and spread it in shelters and other areas. And despite the risk of getting it himself, he said he's not worried. I seem to remember Mother Teresa and the nuns caring for lepers with leprosy in Calcutta. They never wore a mask. They never wore gloves. He has called an ambulance for people with fevers. So far, 30 people in city shelters have tested positive for the virus. The city said they've started isolating them in special units. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. The International Olympic Committee has decided to postpone the Tokyo 2020 Summer Games because of the virus pandemic. The International Olympic Committee has decided to postpone the Tokyo 2020 Summer Games because of the coronavirus pandemic. The Games were set to begin in July. The Olympics have never before been delayed, though they were canceled altogether three times during World Wars I and II. Pressure had been mounting as country after country called on the IOC to delay the Games due to the coronavirus outbreak. Canada became the first country to boycott, followed by Australia. The UK, France and Switzerland, among others, didn't officially pull out, but expressed concerns about the competition going on as scheduled. Athletic organizations fear the Games would be a breeding ground for the pandemic, which could then spread as athletes, fans and the media head back to their home countries, possibly causing an even bigger outbreak of the pandemic. A Turkish college student has a message for his local Chinese embassy. He says the regime should take responsibility for starting the pandemic. NTD Xu Wenrong has the story. He hoped to graduate from college this summer, becoming a TV journalist. Right now, we do not know what will happen in the near future, he told NTD. Orkun is a college student from southern Turkey. He wrote a letter to the Chinese embassy on March 18th asking the Chinese regime to take the responsibility for the CCP virus spreading. Turkey had its first confirmed case two weeks ago and has since closed its colleges for three weeks and schools for one. His letter, Orkun says, In this specific period of time, my university closed down, and while it is closed down, I still need to pay rent for my accommodation there. I hold your government responsible for the financial and psychological troubles resulting from this. I believe that not the Republic of Turkey, but the People's Republic of China is responsible for the troubles resulting from this epidemic. By March 24th, a total of 37 people have died from the CCP virus in Turkey. No government of any country around the world can act this irresponsibly, resulting in other countries being put in danger. He referred to the death of the whistleblower Li Wenliang, who had tried to warn people about the CCP virus but was silenced by the regime. I wanted to take this opportunity to give a voice to the people who are victimized. Lots of people in my close surroundings are facing difficulties at this time. His letter received attention online. He said he hopes the Chinese regime will take due responsibility as the world grapples with the effects of this pandemic. Reporting by Shu Wenrong, NTD News. And India, the second most populous country on Earth, is taking new steps against the spread of the CCP virus, while Japan's summer games get pushed back to next year. India is entering 21 days of total lockdown when midnight struck on Tuesday. The nation's Prime Minister Narendra Modi saying it's the only way to save lives. After health researchers warned more than a million people in India could be infected by mid-May. In contrast to other countries, India's 1.3 billion people are not allowed to leave their homes at all during the lockdown. 
Japan and the Olympics movement on Tuesday decided to delay this year's Tokyo Games. It is the first time in the Olympics' 124-year history that the events will be postponed. The decision means there will be no major sport events around the world this year. Russian President Vladimir Putin was seen wearing a hazmat suit during a visit to a local hospital. Putin has previously said the situation is under control, but some doctors have questioned how far official data reflects reality. The mayor of Moscow said the outbreak in the Russian capital was much worse than official figures showed. Food delivery company Instacart is planning to hire hundreds of thousands of new workers. The move comes as demand surges for grocery deliveries as millions of people stay home. The on-demand grocery startup said Monday it plans to hire 300,000 full-service shoppers who are treated as independent contractors. That would more than double the company's current workforce of full-service shoppers. The hiring would take place in North America over the next three months. Instacart operates in 5,500 cities in North America. It's one of several companies providing essentials to households that are now quickly expanding. Amazon and Walmart each recently announced they plan to hire at least 100,000 workers because of increased customer demand. And Walgreens also announced its hiring. The pharmacy chain plans to hire more than 9,500 workers for stores across the U.S. And back to New York, as the virus bears down on the city, one of its most iconic eateries is closing its doors. But while handing out employees' last paychecks for a while, the restaurant's third-generation owner says he vows to reopen his doors. New York's Junior's Cheesecakes have seen the likes of World War II and 9-11, but those experiences don't make what the restaurant is going through now any easier. Everything is closed. No bakery today. Sorry. In an effort to help stop virus spread, New York City has mandated that all city restaurants and bars operate as to-go only establishments. But Alan Rosen, the third generation owner of Juniors, said that just isn't enough to keep restaurants open. He says his four restaurants are all closed indefinitely, but he plans to keep paying his employees health benefits until he can open his doors again. Uh, out of our 850 employees, 650 are currently unemployed. Rosen and the longtime manager of Junior's Brooklyn, Hastings Stainrod, spent Thursday morning handing employees their last paychecks for the time being. It still feel, feel like a dream. I'm still dreaming. I, I, it's not that I'm really sinking in as yet, maybe in a couple more days, because I've never seen nothing like this here. Junior's has served presidents and celebrities for three generations, but Rosen said he doesn't expect any special treatment from the city. We're resilient and uh, Junior's will be back and New York will be back and Brooklyn will be back. Noting the positive attitudes of his employees that morning, Rosen says he's confident things will take a turn for the better at some point. Here at China In Focus, we bring you first-hand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates.